Wow, that's a bad one. Engine overspeed condition. I'm sitting in my Jaguar F-Pace SVR, and uh, I've had this vehicle for a month and a half. And while I love it, it certainly has done what I thought a Jaguar Land Rover product would do, which is give me faults and errors quite a lot, more than I was expecting. At least 50% of the time, more often than 50% of the time, it throws a fault error during a drive. It's Most of the time, it is a adaptive suspension fault, the electronic shocks, and then it stiffens it right up. That's the most minor thing that it's happening. The other two things that are happening is more intermittent, but more serious. So I get a check engine light every now and then, and I've gotten a gearbox fault twice, and I've had it where I'm just cruising in seventh gear for a long time, light throttle input on a grade, and it slips out of seventh. So those are more serious issues that I do need to take it into a shop and get checked out, but for, for now, I've been just driving it short term here and there, trying to figure out what else is wrong with it before I take it into a shop, and I've been trying to do some scans myself. I've been using a car scanner app to scan the CAN bus network on this vehicle and uh, yeah, it's got a lot of errors, so let's get through it. Yeah, as much as I love having a super sports SUV, it's a JLR product and it's been giving me plenty of electronic weird little faults here and there in the month and a quarter that I've owned it. So uh, yeah, let's take a look at the CAN bus network and see what's going on. This is the apps that I'm using. Uh, I can get the Blair away car scanner. This is the only one I've found so far that has the extended Jaguar connectivity. So if you go into settings and uh, I've got a Jaguar OBD2 extended OBD2 plus extra CAN bus um, and uh, I'm connected through the Carly OBD2 adapter. I just hit the connect button down here and it uh, does the connection. Also, one thing that is important to know is before you unplug the scanner, if you're using an Elm 327 device, any kind of OBD2 Bluetooth scanner, make sure that in the software you're disconnecting it first. If you leave it connected and then unplug the scanner, it leaves the OBD2 port live, powered up, and it can drain your battery. So make sure you disconnect it first and then unplug your, your scanner and, uh, and then you're okay to power off the car. And you want to power off, exit the car, and lock it. And that will finally power off that OBD2 port. If you don't lock the car, it also stays live. And I can get a good start of a scan. So I go diagnostic trouble codes. It defaults to have, wanting to scan all of these modules. Some of them are unselected, but I just want to hit read, start reading. And it seems like every time I'll get a slightly different result. The first two are always correct, so the mass airflow sensor ones I have cleared, and they are stuck in the in there. Um, and then in the ECU, we have the mass airflow sensor that throw a check engine light, which I've not had come on recently. But I'm more so wondering about what's going on with the other voltage errors and CAN bus errors that I'm getting of suspension faults and charge system faults and gearbox faults and ECU uh, connectivity problems. So. Just gonna see how far I get this time. Last time it uh, it faulted out around 27. We'll see if we get any farther this time. It's this all seems to be electric electrical related. Transmission transfer case counterclockwise shift relay coil short circuit to battery. Hey, that seems like a new one. Pretty serious. Anyway, I did get buy a warranty on this car. Take it in to get it professionally scanned, but I am kind of curious on what's going on with it. Looks like we're getting a little bit farther this time. We're up to the seat modules now. This is looking good so far, but eventually it just drops the CAN bus. Probably because I have a short on the CAN bus network and it freaks out and then it drops the connectivity. The car's always been drivable, but it does weird things. This doesn't scare me, but I am kind of curious to see what we get on this read. If we finish all 42 modules, that would be great. Looks like we're going to get there this time. This time I chose a different protocol and kept it all defaults. I've tried the F-Pace protocol. I didn't like it. Hey, that was a complete scan. This is good. All right. Um, so here's all the faults that we got. Transmission range faults. Transfer case faults. Body control module faults. Oil temperature sensor. Um, this one here stuck in gear. I imagine these all happened a long, long time ago, but I'm kind of curious what else is in here. The shift solenoid failures. What are these? 
these ones. Body control module, gateway, injectors, injectors, brake pedal switch malfunction. All right, and then we get some general just, oh, this is under adaptive speed control. All right, so yeah, vehicle area network data bus C. These, these data bus things kind of fail sometimes. Um, Hmm, um, maybe I'll try and export and then a clear and we'll see what happens. This is an interesting response I've not seen before. Code can complete. Please remember that the final decision to whether or not to reset the code is based on your car. So we'll say okay. And we'll go back and we'll make sure that we have a connection. We have a connection. Now we'll do diagnostic trouble codes and we'll read and see what comes back. So I've finally done my first clear. OBD2 code. Oh, there we go. So we've got some codes here. Glow plug monitoring. This vehicle has no glow plugs. Wow. That's a bad one. Engine overspeed condition. But I haven't even started the car again. So these are just stuck in the computer and likely require a more advanced system to clear and then do the test because it says the test failed pending. Anyway, all the codes are coming back. So, uh, so yeah. Time to take it to a professional. If any, we've got more codes now. <laughs> For frig's sakes. I've been sitting here parked and with the ignition off for quite some time, and EC voltage is still at 12.46 volts, which is doing all right for it being off. And just I've done three or four scans. And I have turned most stuff off, climate controls off, ignition is off, but. Um, it keeps most of the modules up and running and Carly is still connected. So anyway, still diagnosing, still playing around with it. Anyway, uh, all of this is beyond my ability to scan beyond this level. So um, I know I've mentioned this a couple times, but I'm going to have to take it into a professional and uh, get some of these things read and cleared and figure out what's uh, what's going on with it. Why is it puking out so many errors on the CAN bus network all the time? Going to have to see what's going on with that. But it's something that I've expected to get buying a JLR product. I knew it wasn't going to be smooth sailing. I knew it was going to cause me more errors than a Volkswagen or Audi or Porsche. But um, I really wanted to own this Jaguar F-Pace SVR and experience it. And uh, I'm okay with going through some of this diagnostic stuff, um, learning its CAN bus network and its quirks. And uh, yeah, we'll just have to take it into a shop. And I'm going to call through my warranty company and say, hey, I'm getting faults every time I drive it. Can I get it into a shop and have it diagnosed and we'll go from there and see what happens. But uh, for now, it's always been drivable. It has done a couple of weird things on me when I'm like cruising for hours and hours and then it'll do like a weird gearbox thing and it'll show me a gearbox fault. Other than that, that's the only drivability thing I've noticed. We'll just uh, take it into a shop and see what happens. All right, guys, if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. If you're new here, subscribe. If you want to talk to me, leave a comment down below. As always, thanks for watching.